Joseph was looking into some of the ancient lore regarding swords in old civilizations. It was something that had always fascinated him. He especially liked the ones that dealt with enchanted swords. From talking to bonding with its users, if he could afford it, he'd hunt down one of these swords to own. Who knows? Maybe he'd be worthy enough to use it. Oftentimes Joseph's research would lead to the internet where he would get the find of a lifetime. He found a site about a mystical sword by the name of Ira. The more Joseph looked into its backstory the more intrigued he became. Even its design was impressive. The symbols adorning the side and the red gem surrounded by a gold pattern added to the complexity and mythology of it. No one knew for sure what they meant which only caused Joseph's interest to go over the top. One link at the bottom of the page is what truly caught his eye. It led to a website where one could buy replicas of the sword. They were cheap, and one could go to their warehouse and get one the same day. Joseph seized the opportunity to obtain the sword, even if it was a replica and scheduled to go down to the warehouse to purchase one. He made arrangements so that he would have nothing else going on that day. He wanted to make sure it would be a special occasion. Joseph got all his bearings and made his way over to the warehouse. He was greeted to a strange looking building, a very ancient looking one. The interior was not unlike a temple. It gave the place some more credibility as an ancient weapons warehouse. As Joseph had finally made his way to the meeting spot, a clock figure can be found with their hands in the robes. So you've made it. A woman's voice speaks up. Why yeah, what's with the outfit? It's a little off-putting. Joseph says nervously. I figured it worked well with the setting. The woman replies. I'm Jessica by the way. Joseph. Right. So do we want to keep chatting or do you want to see the sword? She asks with a smirk, taking off her hood to reveal her face and long blonde hair. Yeah, let's go check it out. He exclaims happily. The woman gives a small smile as she leads him to one of the rooms. Upon entering, Joseph's eyes lit up as he saw the very sword he did much research on. There it is. The original era. Jessica says crossing her arms proudly. I thought you only had replicas? Joseph asks back curiously. No, I have the original. She says proudly, when we began chatting and you told me all about your interest in the sword I couldn't hold it back from you, thanks for that. He says with a smile, getting closer, just whatever you do, don't touch it alright? Jessica asks turning to face Joseph, too late, Joseph had taken the sword off of its mount and held it as his hands, oh no, Jessica lets out in a small whimper, what, I can't not hold it, it's the original era. He starts to trail off as the sword begins to pulsate blue. WH what's happening with this? Joseph asks nervously to Jessica. I I don't know. No one's touched it before. They just always say don't do it. Well I'll just put it back. Joseph says putting it back on the wall. That didn't do anything. Jessica lets out in panic. Suddenly the pulsating stops, causing the two to let out a sigh of relief. However this was quickly cut short as a bright light engulfed the two, and the room itself. In an instant the world around them morphed, the two's bodies both changed before the light diminishes. Jessica's blonde hair turned a grayish blue as it became much shorter, reaching just above her neck. Her hairs became more floppy and larger, akin to a fox's. Her nose became small and gray as her face pushed out into a small muzzle. Around her head. Jessica began to grow cyan fur. Jessica's feminine arms became more muscular and bulkier as his hands became a bit smaller, cyan fur engulfing both the hands and arms. Two of her fingers merged together, leaving her with four digits per hand. Jessica's breasts retreated back into her chest, leaving her completely. Meanwhile her waist filled out while her hips and rear deflated making Jessica's figure flat with her body. To add on to Jessica's growing masculinity, a new organ formed between her legs, to make her much more of a him now. The growing cyan fur quickly reached down to his hips while his legs became more masculine, losing their slender look. The last wave of changes finish off the more bestial part of the transformation. There's a build-up behind Jessica as a long very light blue tail elongates from behind him. It waves idly while the transformation starts to finish off at him feet, which become more paw-like as digits merge together to leave only three. Lastly, 
Jessica's clothing altered to fit his new form cyan pants with a tail hole form around his lower body along with black boots of which his new paws fat perfectly in. A black and red vest formed along with the cyan tail on his upper body. Lastly, a black sun hat with a blue tarp of red formed on Jessica's head, one that had two holes for his ears. While Jessica was changing, so was Joseph. His feet grew white fur all over them as they became much larger and become pole-like feet. His legs become more shapely and much shorter, bringing him to no more than a few feet in height. Joseph's hips pushed outward while his rear become a tad more pronounced. Orange fur began to creep up from his ankles and up his hips. Underneath the fur, Joseph's manhood leaves him leaving himself as the other gender. White fur begins to grow there and goes up her torso and the front of her neck. Orange fur surrounds it as white spots form on her hips. Two small mounds formed at Joseph's chest where her fur became much more fluffy. Her arms became rounder as orange fur grew down them, stopping at her wrists where white fur took its place, her hands turning into paws themselves, her thumbs leaving her. From behind Joseph, a long orange tail elongated reaching past her feet. At her spine, two large bat-like wings grew, orange like her body. Almost naturally, Joseph started flapping in the air as if she had always done so. Lastly, Joseph's head altered and became more bestial, her cheeks becoming larger, her eyes became emerald as black fur grew out almost like makeup. A cartoonishly large eyelashes emerged out from each of her new eyes. Joseph's ears became much larger akin to a bat's as her hair retreated into the orange fur that had overtaken her head, save for the center which donned white fur. A small tuft of hair stuck out from the top of her head. Ending the transformation, when the light faded away, Jessica laid black out on the ground, a rub in hand. Joseph fluttered in the air next to them. The world around them was now in a forest sitting, Jessica lying back on the stump of a fallen tree. Dust, wake up, Joseph says trying to shake the fox awake. W-H way, Jessica says groggily bringing up a hand to his head. Fidget, what happened? Well dust dot 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 you a dot 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 fell. Fidget replies with a small giggle. I was worried that it you have hurt yourself dot 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 it looked really funny though. Thanks for your concern. Dust replied with a hint of sarcasm. He shakes his head and gets up slowly. That's why you shouldn't try to show off. Fidget defends. I can't win an argument with you can I? He says with a playful chuckle. That's right, Fidget says crossing her arms. I'm the best at arguing. I figured that much out. Come on, let's keep going.